Welcome to HIMT. My name is Ishvi Rajesh. In this video, we will discuss on uh, GMDSSC areas and equipment carriage requirements. Objective of this session, at the end of this session, we should uh, be able to, number one, understand GMDSSC areas. Number two, able to identify various equipments that is required to be carried for each C area. Purpose of GMDSS C areas. GMDSS C areas uh, serve two purposes. One, to describe areas where GMDSS services are available. Number two, to define what GMDSS ships uh, must carry. GMDSS C areas are defined under four categories, as you can see here. It's namely A1, A2, A3, and a4. Let us go and see each and every C area. First, we'll take uh, C area A1. Definition of C area A1 is the area within the coverage of at least one core station equipped with uh, VHF DSC, that is Detail Selective Calling Equipment, where continuous 24 hours alerting is possible on VHF channel 70. Range covered is approximately around uh, 20 to 30 nautical miles. So what is uh, A1? We have a core station where uh, that core station keeps watch continuously for 24 hours on VHF channel 70. The range covered by that VHF station is uh, called as A1. In case if a ship is threatened by uh, imminent danger or any emergency, that vessel can alert the shore-based uh, rescue authorities and the ships uh, nearby within the VHF coverage by sending a DSC alert on uh, channel 7. Let us see what is C area A2. Area excluding A1 coming within the medium frequency coverage of a coast station where continuous DSC alerting is possible on frequency 2187.5 kilohertz Range covered, uh, we could say approximately around uh, 250 to 300 nautical miles. Our understanding, any ship sailing in sea area A2 in distress or in an emergency can definitely send a DSC distress alert using that equipment whereby this alert will be picked up by the coast radio station which has got 24 hours uh, watch keeping on 287.5 kilohertz and also the uh, vessels in the uh, coverage area of the MF will be also able to receive this uh, distress alert. What is C area A3? It's an area excluding A1 and A2, which comes under the coverage of uh, Inmasat uh, satellites where continuous distress alerting is possible. This is an area lying between 76 degrees north and 76 degrees south. This area is termed as A3. So when a vessel uh, sails in sea area A3, that vessel will be able to utilize MF, HF, and the VHF services, and also make use of uh, satellite communication for alerting as well as routine day-to-day -day communications. We will go for uh, C area A4. C area A4 is uh, the area outside A1, A2, and A3, termed as uh, polar regions, there's the North Pole and the South Pole. Here, communication is only by means of uh, terrestrial radio path with the use of VHF, MF, and HF. That's very high frequency, medium frequency, and high frequency. We make use of voice, NBDP, that is Telex uh, over radio, DSC, using the VHF, MF, and HF bands. These are the means of communication possible in this region as uh, satellite coverage using the Inmarsat satellites uh, doesn't extend to this uh, region. Uh, these are the areas uh, which is above 76 degrees uh, north and below 76 degrees south. As we can see in this picture, <clears throat> which uh, speaks about uh, the sea areas, we can uh, very well see this particular area, which is covered by a VHF coast station, and you can uh, see it extends up to uh, 25 nautical miles. And uh, area A2, they say around 150 miles, but uh, MF uh, coverage uh, can very well go beyond 250 to 300 miles as well. 
So uh, anything approximately say 150 or 200 miles, excluding A1, we can see uh, C area A2 in this region. And beyond A1 and A2, you can find marked as C area A3. So this is the area which is lying a little bit uh, far up from uh, the coast. You can very well see a vessel in distress, can use uh, the communication services as required, including the EPIRB and the uh, SART. And you can very well see area A4, which is uh, marked uh, on the polar region. This is just a basic understanding for us to uh, see practically what is the area covered by uh, each area. And uh, uh, the equipment carry requirement is based on the area where uh, our ship is going to sail. If the ship is going to be only in area A1, they will have to carry equipment uh, which will satisfy the requirement for A1. We will discuss on the equipment carriage also. The type of equipment to be carried on any vessel together with its maintenance arrangements and operating personnel is determined by the vessel's area of operation. These four sea areas have been defined according to the coverage of VHF, MF, and HF coastal radio service, as well as the satellite services. Sea areas, equipment carriage, what we can see here, area A1, which is going to be always within the VHF coverage of a coast radio station. A1 vessel should carry VHF uh, installation, that is VHF uh, DSC equipment plus radio telephone, we generally call it as VHF radio. 406 megahertz uh, EPRB, that's emergency position indicating radio beacon. Seria A2, which is uh, coming within the MF coverage of a coast radio station, that vessel should carry VHF and medium frequency installation, including both uh, DSC and uh, for voice, that's the radio telephony. 406 megahertz EPRB is also a requirement. Let us come to A3. VHF installation, VHF DSC plus RT. Along with that, MFHF installation, including your DSC and radio telephony, plus Inmarsat installation. Uh, as we discussed, A3 area is uh, going to be a little bit far away from the coast. That is beyond A1 and A2. That area definitely we require 406 megahertz EPRB to be carried. Area A4, the polar regions, we need to have VHF, MF, and HF. Only thing is, uh, Inmarsat communications using satellites will not be possible in this region. And of course, we can use our 406 megahertz uh, emergency position indicating uh, radio beacon. What are the additional requirements for all sea areas? We need to have a search and rescue radar transponder, a SART, which is a locating device requirement. Cargo ships above 300 gross tonnage, below 500 uh, gross tonnage, required to carry one number of uh, SART. Cargo ships above 500 gross tonnage and all passenger ships are required to carry minimum two number of uh, SARTs. Survival craft or radio telephones for emergency communications from the survival craft during SCR operations. Cargo ships above 300 uh, gross tonnage but below 500 gross tonnage required to carry uh, two VHF sets. What about cargo ships above 500 gross tonnage and all passenger ships are required to carry three VHF sets. Additionally, Navtex receiver is a requirement to receive maritime safety information. One Navtex receiver is required where the Navtex service is not available. The vessel must have uh, uh, receiving maritime safety information using the Inmarsat enhanced group calling uh, system or the service or on the HF uh, bands, direct printing telegraphy may be used to receive MSA, which should be directly printed out. That's the additional requirement for an Aptex uh, receiver or your Inmarsat EGC service for receiving MSI. With this, uh, we conclude this video. Thanking you very much.